Hi guys, and today we have finally got our hands on the Jaguar F-Pace. This is, of course has been around for a year, actually it was introduced last year, but we saw it even before that as a CX-17 uh, concept car. That even came to Dubai. It must have been about 2013 that that car came out. Now a lot of you guys are looking at this Jaguar's first SUV. How odd, how bizarre, how unusual. Well, it is what it is, it exists. Everybody's moving towards SUVs, so it's not really a surprise. Just, you know, live with it, man, come on. Um, what you're thinking though, Jaguar, Jaguar Land Rover, sister companies, that's probably a Land Rover, right? It's not a Land Rover. This actually, the platform on this car is based on the Jaguar XE, which I really rate. I think it's a fantastic looking uh, saloon, uh, fantastic to drive as well. And that same platform is actually underpinning most of the new Jags because it also underpins the XF and um, a new XJ when it comes out will also be on a lengthened version of the same platform, I hear tell. So this car is not a Land Rover, this is a Jaguar. And these cars, uh, I can tell you that the prices for these cars start at 232,000 dirhams. That's about $63,000. The cars that we get in this range, in this region for the range, we get the, uh, the three liter V6, and that puts out 340 brake horsepower, which is good enough to give you a zero to 100 time of uh, 5.8 seconds. And of course, they're all limited to 250 kilometers per hour. This is also a 3 liter V6 supercharged. However, this is the top of the range car. And this is not the ordinary supercharged. This is the S version. And the S version gets more horsepower. This one gets 380 brake horsepower and 340 pounds worth of torque. It's good for zero to 100 in 5.5 seconds. And again, the same limited top speed of 250. Prices for this one actually start at 317,200 dirhams uh, but, and about 86,000, 86,500 dollars. Uh, but this car that you're looking at here, because it's a press car, because it's a full option one, is actually 349,000 dirhams, which is 95,000 uh, dollars. It comes in the ultimate black color here and it comes with a jet red zone interior which you'll see in a bit it's uh, quite substantial and of course he's amazing these spectacular 22 inch wheels who puts 22 inch wheels on an suv a compact suv at that is it a compact suv it actually sits between the mccann the porsche mccann and the porsche cayenne it's sort of midway between those so it's sort of around the rival of a cayenne and maybe a maserati levant that sort of thing uh, but yeah, 22 inch rims. I mean, I thought only Rolls Royces have that. No, this has that as well. Other differences, it has bigger scoops on this one because of course it needs a better, better breathing, right? It's a supercharged car. Okay, so let's have a little uh, look at the boot and uh, the rest of the car. So guys, I want to show you the boot, but before I normally use the key to open the boot, right? Um, that's not the key. Uh, the key is here. There's the key, as you'd expect. A very typical Jaguar key, as you can see, there it is. However, there is another key to this car, and that's what I want to show you. And this is the key here. Can you see that? It's more like a, a wrist, one of those, you know, those things that you use to measure your health and your heartbeat and that sort of stuff for athletic, adventurous, lifestyle -y people. Well, this is for those as well, actually, because they believe that this Jaguar is bought by the adventurous type, the type that spend all of their spare time and their spare working, uh, spare hours uh, at the beach surfing and swimming and all that sort of things right and when you do that you want to lock or you don't want to carry the key around because you don't want to drop it in the water and your belongings and stuff so you want to lock all of that in the boot this thing apparently is waterproof so what you can do is you can lock everything in the boot and then use this thing to actually touch it somewhere on the car I won't tell you where because that kind of gives away the the idea of security doesn't it but somewhere on the car you can touch this and it's not the obvious place you touch this and you can lock and unlock the car anyway let's let's open it conventionally there's a button under there, and there it goes. Now, because this car uh, is not then aimed at family people, but at the adventurous lifestyle people, you can see that they have obviously not cared much about practicality either. Actually, to be honest, that's not the fault of where the car is aimed at. That is the fault of, sorry about that noise in the background. They're not hyenas, they're not birds, they're actually children playing. Anyway, this car is aimed not at the children and not at family people either because there's no boot space. And the reason for that is because underneath this raised ginormous panel here is an equally ginormous wheel because it's got those ridiculous 22 inch wheels, right? Now I reckon without those wheels, if you go for the lower spec car, then that actually would be quite a practical boot space, as you can see, with quite a decent uh, loading space, a uh, good amount of room and those split folding seats. The split folding seats can be operated from levers on either side. There's also hooks on either side if you can see there and there it's a first aid kit there's another hook over there there is a light over there and uh, a 12 volt power supply so quite practical it would have been if it hadn't been 
for this raised floor. I wonder if the practicality has been compromised in the rear passenger compartment. Let's have a look. Cool, blimey, Gav. It's so much nicer to be in the serenity of this Jag because of two reasons. The hot weather and those bloody noisy kids. Oh well, what are you going to do, eh? Anyway, it is quite nice back here, actually, now that I mention it, because um, this seat is obviously set for me. This is the driver's seat. I'm six foot two, about 188 centimeters. So with that being said, if you look, plenty of space for my feet, no issues with the shin, and of course, there's room to spare when it comes to the knees. I'm also quite comfortable here. This scooped out rear, it's a sort of uh, uh, bucket kind of arrangement but for rear seats. So this scooped out is perhaps a little bit too scooped out because uh, this is kind of digging into my sides. But um, considering the sporty intent and the sporty nature of the car, I suppose, you know, if you're four up doing the Nürburgring, they might appreciate that. But the other thing is they might appreciate is more upright rear seats. This is quite reclined, but actually I think they're adjustable. Um, and I think there's a little lever somewhere to be able to do that. So that's quite handy. What else do you get back here? You get an AC vent on each of the pillars and you get two AC vents in the middle plus pretty much a, a full suite of climate control buttons there. No USBs and you know, you guys know how much I love my USB so that's a bit annoying. Again, not really considering the family. There are power supplies though, one on each side so I suppose you could go out and buy your own adapters. <sighs> Need for an egg. Uh, Isofix, hang on, if it's not a family friendly car, why has it got Isofix? Well, I all have to have that, don't they? Um, there is a center armrest but there's no compartment just a pair of cup holders but having said that if you if you can get over the the shock of this very red interior cabin here um it's not a bad place to be uh and it even got it's got a full length uh, sunroof as well if you can make that out um but you know what time to get in the front here we go now i turned it off i could turn it back on again because i wanted to show you because it obviously has the signature rising knob there you go doesn't have the rotating vents anymore but uh, it has the full digital instrument panel uh, again I won't go into too much detail but you can go uh, through that uh, left side it's got fantastic stereo it's got a uh, 11 speaker Meridian I think it's 380 watts of power um, not the best I've heard but substantial, quite substantial. And it has the, uh, the quite easy to use and fairly intuitive uh, Jaguar touchscreen interface, as you can see there, all the usual things are there. You got your massive, uh, that actually covers the whole screen if you go for it. Uh, your phone, your Bluetooth, your climate control. It doesn't have cool seats this one, I was a bit surprised. No cool seats. You're skipping out on me Jaguar, what's going on? So, um, and camera. And again, camera, it's got reversing camera, and it's got a couple of different variations of reversing camera, but it doesn't have a 360, not a front camera. So again, I would have, you know, looking at other cars in this market and looking at what people are offering, um, I would have expected that. Uh, a little space there, and perfect to put your iPhone and uh, your phone down there, even a pair of glasses perhaps, although you can leave your glasses up here, of course. Uh, lifestyle, baby! And you've got your sunroof buttons up there. These are all your dynamic controls down here. So, of course, you know, you press these and you can see them here. It goes from dynamic. Uh, and, of course, the dials go red because they always go red when it's dynamic and sporty. And you've got eco and the dials don't go green. Hmm, I thought they'd go green, but they don't. Anyway, uh, we put it back in, we'll put it back into regular. In dynamic, it's quite interesting, but um, around town, it's better this way. You got your electronic parking brake and uh, traction off button is there if you want to go off road, which I assume it can do, although in 22 inch rooms. <sighs> Blimey, governor. Uh, under here, you got your cup holder and an ashtray. Why you got an ashtray? Smoking bad for you. Don't smoke. And in here, you've got your compartment, and there's a leisure key hiding in there. Uh, in here, you've also got uh, a power supply down there, and you do have two USBs here. So they've kind of made up for the, the lack of a USB in the back by having one up here. So you could run a cable along there. There's a little pocket along here. You can see it on here as well, on this side. Um, but otherwise, if you're a, a, a Jaguar owner or a fan of Jaguars, then it'll be quite a familiar environment to you. These are pretty much race bucket seats. They're quite nicely done. Up here, they're more supportive. I actually appreciate the support that I'm getting here in the front rather than in the back, which I thought was a little bit obtrusive. Now, a couple of things on this car. First of all, 
it has no glove box well it does you can see it there it is however watch this let me open the glove box for you ah there's a fire extinguisher in there which in itself is a little bit alarming uh, well we are in a hot country British car I'm not saying anything I'm not saying anything but I'm saying that they have just completely given over the glove box to a fire extinguisher so that's quite a lot of emphasis on something that's designed to put out flames so that's one thing from going from very hot to very cold let's talk about the AC vent this is the third new Jaguar in a row where I have an issue with the placement of the left vent uh, this is not as bad as the XC and the XF uh, which you can't actually adjust I could never get them to adjust properly to blow air where I wanted it rather than just to freeze the knuckles of my hand as it was on resting on the steering wheel in the correct position this one initially was also doing that actually it's still doing that but it's a little bit more adjustable so it's not as bad but I don't know why they have that issue with that probably because they insist on maintaining this line that goes all around the cabin and because and that maybe dictates the placement of those vents now the other issue that I have in terms of placement of things is the buttons here for the um, the mirrors and the child lock and the uh, electric windows now first of all it's too high you expect them to be down here instead down here you've got the memory uh, buttons so you expect them to be down here they're not they're up here so that's one thing is that it's too high and also this is not actually designed for uh, you know your elbow it's just it's a bit too high and also the angles a bit odd see it's all sort of slanted downwards and the other thing I have an issue with or I'm concerned with I should say is the fact that those buttons there are sitting potentially most of the day in direct sunlight that's plastic buttons with electronic stuff underneath and this is a British car yeah I'm not confident about that so I'm not sure about the placement of that other than that you've got your paddles over here which are quite nicely done and uh, all the, there's a little S button S, uh, S motive down there and everything else is pretty much you know as you'd expect it to be and the seating position is pretty good all round visibility is not bad the mirrors could have been slightly uh, wider just to give you a little bit more uh, view but they do have blind spot uh, indicators so that's quite good right it's time to take this thing for a drive but not here because it's a lot of traffic and a lot of kids and I think we, it deserves a little bit of a proper drive so uh, I'm going to take it to a somewhere a bit nicer and by the magic of editing you won't even notice that I've journeyed from here today right so let's take it for a little bit of a drive and see how it feels and I've brought it down to this little desert road that's uh, sort of halfway between a gravel track a tarmac bit it's kind of like a more like a, a rally stage really but uh, we will not be doing rally stages of course that's not going to be happening but nonetheless we will see if we can exploit that adaptive damper because this road's really bumpy it's actually really quite bad in places so it's a good test to see if I put it into let me put it into sports mode and uh, oh that's good <laughs> immediately you go rah, rah, okay and uh, dynamic yeah dynamic is selected and uh, look at that here we go so this road is a bit it's quite rough it's quite it's a little bit twisty but it's very rough but this thing has adaptive suspension and it has torque vectoring so really and it's also built on the same platform as the Jaguar XC which I thought was actually a very good little sports saloon so I think this should be quite good now brakes could be a bit more bitey steering this electric power steering electric power assist steering and really it could do with a bit more feel and certainly could even weight up a little bit more uh, I think that would be quite nice um, but performance wise oh my god and this is without using the paddles let's go into paddles now so third gear is a big dial right in the middle so that helps you it's nice when the number is right there in the middle and it tells you what gear you're in but yeah banging it down through the changes very good response on the ZF 8-speed transmission oh good hold good road holding there good grip a little bit of body lean and the ride is quite good though the ride is holding on very very well indeed but uh, there is a little bit of a body so I mean you know you can tell it's a, it's a tall vehicle so obviously that's to be expected but body control so far is pretty good feels pretty tight just keeping in third gear pretty much on this I could do with better braking honestly a little bit more of a reassuring initial bite um, especially in this sort of exercise would be helpful in a normal normal driving scenario I've not found it to be a problem but uh, uh, when you're doing this sort of thing yeah I could do with a little bit more just a little bit more confidence from the brakes especially when you got quite a bit of performance on tap 
I mean that 0 to 105.5 seconds is very very apparent now that yes this is that sort of vehicle and uh, yeah I mean the grip is there and certainly the poise is there but a little bit more um, feedback from the steering and uh, slightly more effective braking would just give me a little bit more confidence to really start chucking it around um, checking down the second gear let's go this way yeah a little bit of understeer it's funny that you can see the torque vectoring whoa <laughs> just missed the up chain there no, pop, 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 pop. that is like a rally car right but the, as i was saying the torque vectoring i just did you could just detect it there because what it did was that i was getting a little bit of understeer and it's a slippery surface so it's a double whammy a little bit of understeer and then the torque vectoring just sort of caught and then pulled it around so very very effective there on the tight corner very bumpy very rough road indeed and, and quite a test for a vehicle like this actually and I have to say it's doing really really well um, like I said the only thing that's holding me back a little bit is my own slight lack of confidence um, because I don't think I'm getting enough feedback from the steering wheel and the, and the brakes but other than that it's doing the business and it's holding on very very well indeed some roadworks here believe it or not yes this tiny little road there's actually some roadwork, so I'm just gonna slow down through here. It says, caution, men at work. I don't see any men, but to be fair, it is the middle of the day, and it's about 43 degrees outside. So, uh, only mad dogs and Englishmen, as they say. And uh, believe it or not, you have the latter right here in an English car. So it's quite appropriate that we're barreling along through the desert for no apparent reason whatsoever under these ridiculous climatic conditions. But there you go. We're just proving a point really and the point is that actually it's quite a fun car so let's just take it easy for a minute because enough of that because 90 percent of owners 90 percent of the time let's make that 99 percent if you like will not be driving like this they'll be driving normally like this and around town i've driven it on the motorway it's absolutely fine and around town it's fine i'm surprised that with the 22 inch wheels that this one has which are, i think absolutely absurd the ride is actually okay around town here it's a bit knobbly on this tarmac you can really feel i mean it's picking up everything but like i said this is a rough piece of tarmac it is picking everything it's picking up everything but on on the main roads in the round town it's absolutely fine so actually very very good it's a good thing i slowed down because there's two camels just standing in the middle of the road now oh any shawarma camel shawarma anyone there you go but um and there's one right in the middle so i don't know where to go left or right of him but anyway th so to wrap it up a uh, very good car uh, I was hoping for a little bit more sportiness from this car knowing that it's on the Jaguar XC platform which I thought was a really good sporty car but overall for an SUV not bad at all um, reasonably uh, uh, entertaining to drive but actually quite satisfying to own so a pretty good proposition all around really there it is there's our review uh, please do check us out on motoringme.com please do check us out on all the social media just search for motoring middle east and i'll put up some things right now and uh, you can also uh, see us on youtube and if you're watching this on youtube that camel is certainly watching me i don't think he's watching me on youtube he's watching me on live vision hey mate uh, and if you're watching this on youtube and for more camels and cars please do hit the, uh, the subscribe button and of course do share it as well that'd be great thank you so much you can also follow me by the way and uh, my links are here you just search for shazad shake and i'm on instagram twitter and snapchat all the rest of it thanks so much for watching until the next one what the hell with huh that's it you can remove this thing and then there's more space what well, hang on that's fixed that doesn't move What's that? that's what is that my god what is that for someone with it what is it something that nightwing has on the back of his back to attack people what the hell show me this it's quite heavy it is it's actually really heavy. What is it meant to be? <laughs> no what is it for? That's weird.